Congratulations, you've made it to the interview stage. All of your hard application work has paid off, and suddenly the prospect of getting the job becomes very real and the nervousness sets in. Not to worry, this lesson will discuss a variety of strategies for making sure you are well prepared. Let's begin. First of all, to prepare content-wise for your interview, you should review, review, review. First off, review the job description and qualifications. You can't anticipate every question you'll be asked during an interview, but it's a pretty sure bet that the majority will be based on the job duties and qualifications stated in the job announcement. A good practice is to look at them one by one and consider what kind of question they might ask about it and how you would respond. By thinking about your potential answers, you can determine good examples or explanations in advance instead of on the fly during an interview. It may even be helpful to have a friend or colleague do the question by question asking to simulate an actual interview. Next, it's good to review your cover letter and CV. Remember that these two documents may be all that your interviewers know about you prior to your interview their frame of reference. A good stretch of time may have passed between when you wrote them and your interview, so it's good to review both documents, especially your cover letter, to make sure you're on the same page. Remember what you are trying to emphasize and highlight, anticipate questions you might be asked, and be prepared to elaborate. Additionally, if you are applying for a teaching position, it pays to review your philosophy of teaching statement you are very likely to get questions both directly and indirectly about your teaching, your beliefs, and your approach. Also, it can be a good strategy to have some pertinent materials or documents from your portfolio handy to help better illustrate what you've done and can do, if it makes sense to introduce them during the interview. For example, if you are applying to a position that focuses on teaching, listening, and speaking, what activities, projects, or materials could you provide to show what you've done in the past? Finally, take out your notes from your information search and review what you know about the job's institution, program, courses, faculty, student population, areas of focus, mission, and goals, and where you may potentially fit in with them. If it's been a while since you did your search, you may want to do another one in case anything has changed. Doing your homework in this manner demonstrates your interest, seriousness, and awareness about the job. It is painfully obvious to employers when job seekers come and really have no idea about the job and its context. Don't be that person. Activate all this above knowledge beforehand so you are well prepared when you go in. One common question used to start interviews after greetings and introductions have been made is, so tell us about yourself. This is not an open invitation to launch into an extended biography of your life, but instead is an icebreaker and a chance to briefly highlight who you are, what you do, and what you're interested in for the future, i.e. this job, all in a nutshell. These are often referred to as elevator pitches or elevator speeches, and as the name suggests, they should be brief enough to be done in the space of an elevator ride, around a minute or so. This does not mean you should cram in as much information as possible and rush through it, which could be confusing and hard to follow. Instead, be judicious on what you include. What will help your interviewers best understand who you are and spark interest in what you bring. Other topics to highlight briefly include the reasons you are excited about the position, teaching passions, personality traits you have that will help with the job, professional and personal interests, and so forth. Preparing for your elevator pitch in advance, should the question be asked, can be a good smooth way to begin. Again, your reply is just an introductory overview. The main meaty interview questions will soon follow, where you can go into detail about your qualifications, experience, and skills.
do you have any questions for us? This question is typically asked at the end of interviews and is often a missed opportunity. By not having any questions prepared for your interviewers, they might get the impression that you're not truly interested in the job or institution and that you have no desire to probe further or learn more about them. Here are some strategies for preparing for this final question. If during your information search for this job, there was some important information you couldn't find or was missing, this would be a good time to ask. Perhaps you wanted to know more about some aspect of the job's duties, the staff, recent projects, daily activities for the position, the institution, etc. Ask. Also, you could inquire about success criteria and expectations for the position. Here are some examples. What objectives do you hope to achieve with the hired candidate's help? When you evaluate how successful a person has been in this position, what factors do you consider? What other traits or abilities do you feel are important for success in this kind of work? In addition, you could explore the program or department's future direction. Here are some examples. What would you like to see happening for your program in the future? What new courses would your department like to be offering in the next few years? If you are at liberty to discuss such things, what challenges do you foresee the department or school facing in the coming years? Finally, if during your interview the employer mentions something interesting about the position or the program that you wanted to know more about, that you perhaps have jotted down in your notes, ask them to elaborate. In all these situations, after listening to the employer's response, if applicable, try to offer ways that you and your skill set may be able to help if given the chance. Finally, before you enter the interview room, make sure you are prepared emotionally. First, being well-dressed and on time for an interview helps convey that you are interested and serious about the position. They may also help boost your confidence and allay some natural nervousness. If your interview is in an unfamiliar location, plan to arrive early and have a phone number contact with you in case you get lost. Rushing around trying to find a place can add to one's anxiety. If you have a virtual or online interview, make sure you are familiar and comfortable with the technology in advance, so you are not stressing over it when the interview begins. Be centered. If you have reviewed and prepared content-wise for your interview, as discussed previously, it should help you feel more poised, knowledgeable, comfortable, and confident going in. In sum, be sure you are mentally and emotionally prepared for the various phases of the interview. The beginning, your brief self-intro. The middle, the main content where you address the job qualifications and show you are a good fit. And the end, your questions for them. The more you prepare, the more confident and ready you will feel going into the interview. Good luck. Next up, test what you've learned in the Think section. Check out the Dig Deeper resources for even more strategies and tips. In the Discuss section, respond to the following prompt. Think of your own professional interview experiences. Do any particular preparation strategies discussed ring true for you? Do you have other preparatory interview tips you'd like to share? Thank you for joining us.